you're probably aware of the mutualistic symbiotic relationship between oak trees and squirrels, but you might not know that oak trees do something incredibly manipulative to the squirrels. It's all about seed dispersal. So oak trees want to disperse their seeds far away from the parent tree in the hope that a new oak tree will grow and it won't be in the shadow, literally, of the parent. So the oak tree makes acorns. An acorn is basically a container of nutrients with a little embryo near the tip. Because they're full of nutrients, squirrels eat them and they eat them in their entirety, including the seed, which is no good for the oak tree. The reason this relationship is mutualistic is because squirrels are caching animals. They save resources to use in winter. They do this by burying acorns in little caches underground. The reason this works for the oak tree is because occasionally a squirrel will forget about one of its caches or will die before getting around to that cache. So there's potential for a new oak tree to grow from that location. That much you probably already know, but oak trees are able to vastly improve their chances of getting acorns into abandoned caches by doing something called masting. Every approximately five years, though it varies a lot, an oak tree will produce a huge overabundance of acorns, like tens of times more acorns than on a normal year. These years are called masting years. This bumper crop of acorns is way more than the local squirrel population and other predators could possibly bury and eat. But you know what? Those squirrels are gonna give it a damn good go. You'll forgive me for anthropomorphizing, but the squirrel just looks at these acorns and thinks, this is incredible. I'm just gonna bury as many of these as I possibly can. So they do, and loads of those caches end up unused. And that's exactly what the oak tree wants. It wants abandoned acorns that have the potential to grow into new oak trees. But if an oak tree has this capacity to produce an insane number of acorns on certain years, why not just spread that capacity out over all years? Well, if oak trees did that, then the predator population, including squirrels, would rise up to meet that capacity. Like during mashed years, Squirrels get a huge boost in nutrition, so they make more babies and the squirrel population goes up. But the following year, the squirrel population will go back down again because we're back down to a normal level of acorns. So doing it this way, where you have mostly low yield years followed by sudden spikes of yield, that controls the predator population. It keeps it at a low level and then you just overwhelm them. It's an example of predator satiation. It happens with cicadas as well, for example. Cicadas spend many years underground and they all come out at the same time in a huge swarm for the three Fs, feeding, fighting, and mating. And they overwhelm the predator population. Like the predators are going, oh, I couldn't possibly eat another one. Actually, in the case of cicadas, the predator is a wasp. So it's the wasp is like, oh, I couldn't possibly lay another egg in a cicada because that's what they do. By the way, um, th there's a potential uh, explanation for why certain cicadas live underground and then come out in these prime number uh, cycle of years, 13 and 17 year long cycles. Uh, I've made a video about that on number file. I'll link in the description to that. I actually make the same three Fs joke in that video. It's a good joke. It's funny because you think I'm gonna say feeding, fighting, and fuck. Just like cicadas, oak trees have to agree on when to have a mast year. Like if cicadas spend 17 years living underground, but they're all out of sync with each other, so you've got cicadas popping up every year, then predator satiation wouldn't work. It's the same with oak trees. If you've got a population of oak trees and there's always one or two having a mashed year, then that wouldn't control the predator population, the squirrel population. Instead, like if you go into uh, your local woods and you see one oak tree producing an insane number of acorns, then all the other oak trees will be doing it as well. I think it might be a mashed year where I live, actually. I don't know, it seems like a lot of acorns. What do you think, is that a lot of acorns? Seems like a lot of acorns. 
the scientists don't know how this coordination happens. It might be that all oak trees have a mast year under very specific weather conditions, so it always happens for all oak trees, or it might be a chemical signaling in the roots underground. You know, in general, seed dispersal is really interesting. Like, not just the mad thing that the oak tree does. There are loads of examples of weird seed dispersal, like um, tumbleweed, for example, is seed dispersal. Coconuts, that's an example of nautical seed dispersal. I actually talk about some of my favorite examples of weird seed dispersal in my new podcast. I've got a podcast. It's actually not just my podcast. It's Matt Parker and Helen Arnie's podcast. The three of us talk about stuff that we find really interesting. It's called a podcast of unnecessary detail because some things become really interesting when you get down into the detail. It's only been out for a couple of days. It's already doing really well on the charts. I hope you'll have a listen to it because I'm really excited about it. Um, the seed dispersal episode is out in a couple of weeks. So there's, there's three episodes out already, so you can listen to all of those and then they're out on a weekly basis. Um, I hope you'll leave a review. I hope you'll tell your friends about it. All the links are in the description. It's also on YouTube, so I'll put a link to that on the end card. Well, it'll be somewhere on the screen, won't it? That's it really, you know, this is just one of my short um, in betweeny videos, so there's no sponsor. Just wanted to take this opportunity to tell you about my podcast. I hope you'll have a listen. Thanks a lot. See you next time.